guys, I'm Andrew, and today I'm playing Grand Archive. This is a trading card game that's currently on Kickstarter. I'm currently backing it, but I'm otherwise unaffiliated with them. But I figured they have the print and play up, they have the tabletop simulator module up. Let me get in and try it out and see if my pledge is worthwhile. So I've just got set up in tabletop simulator. I have not played this game at all. I did watch a gameplay video and I've looked through some of the rules. So hopefully this will uh, work out okay. But let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing is I will be playing as, with the starter deck, Rye vs. Lorraine. And uh, I think the first thing we do on our first turn here is we're going to search our material deck for our spirit. So we're going to start out with the Spirit of Fire. You can see in the top left corner it is level 0. That means we don't have to pay to bring this out. There are other level 0s um, in here, but I think... I think we are required to bring out the spirit, and there's no reason that you would... And I don't think it makes much sense to do anything else anyway. So, go ahead and do that. Uh, we don't start with cards in our hand. Um, but, when we play this, we get the enter effect to draw six cards. So, I already shuffled my deck, and I'm going to go ahead and draw six cards. Well, actually, I have... Um... So, I don't want to use actual hands. So, I think what I might do is not use their play mat here. Uh, I'm just going to put my hand here, and then maybe I'll put my memory here, and then I'll have my seal up here. Um, just because I don't want to use the hands, because I have to manage two players' hands. Uh, I don't know how to switch between players. And tabletop simulator. So let's just do it this way. So this is our six-card hand, and let's see what we can do. So I think what I want to do is play this library width here, and Right off the bat, you can see a lot of the cards right now have test sample artwork. These are just sketches of things that I've thrown in. These are not the final art. So you can definitely tell when something looks final and when it doesn't. So don't judge the game by the non-final artwork. But I'm going to bring up the library with, and you can see in the top left corner, she costs two. And I can pay two. So what I'm going to do is put her out uh, next to my Spirit of Fire here. This is my current champion, level zero. This is my character, by the way, and I've got 10 health. You can see at the bottom right. So over here, we're going to be tracking my uh, my damage that I've taken because as I level up my hero, my health will increase as well. So you're you're kind of dealing damage to your opponent and trying to deal enough to their champion to take them out as their health is actually increasing as they level up. So at some point, it becomes pretty difficult to level up uh, from the games I have seen. So you know, the, you do reach a kind of a top end of, of health eventually um, and you can reach that but don't expect to tend to be all of my health that I've seen it's going to go up but in a lot of ways the champion does function like an uh, like an ally so uh, I'm just going to put her out here next to my champion and I need to pay two so the way I pay two is I pick two cards from my hand and put them into my memory and again I put my memory I filled my memory area up with my hand but I'm just going to put the memory above that and I think I I think this card seems pretty good, but it's arcane, and I arcane. I don't know how well I can play that actually. Um, so in order to play an arcane card, I need to be level three because you can see at the top right, uh, I would actually un unlock the arcane element for myself by reaching level three. Uh, level two, I don't get any new element. Level one, I don't get any new element. So I'm basically just playing with fire cards until I get up to level three, or the neutral cards, of course. So, the normals. So, I can't play this for a while, so I'm not going to hold on to it. And I'm also not going to hold on to this cure into mana for now. So, I'm going to put both of those into my memory to pay for the memory cost of the Library Witch. And I could play some of these other cards, but the only one I'm really interested in playing would maybe this Magus with Disciple. Um, and units can or allies can attack the same turn you play them, so I may as well just wait until next turn uh, to play her, because I don't have anything to attack right now because my opponent hasn't played their champion yet. So I'm not going to play her. I'm not spending anything by by holding her, because I would just put these two cards in my memory. And now, as you'll see, I get my memory back, or at least most of it. So by playing her now, the only thing I'd be doing is showing my opponent that I've got it, and um, giving them more options to kill it early by attacking. And, and risking losing these cards that I actually kind of want to hold on to when I do 
uh, manifest the next card from this deck here. And you'll see how that works uh, later. I'm sorry, it's materialized, not manifest. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and end my turn here, switch to player two, and we're going to search our uh, materialization deck here and pull out the Spirit of Wind. And just like the Spirit of Fire, it says enter effect, draw six cards. So we'll go ahead and get six. And if I were using hands, it would be as simple as mousing over the deck and pressing the number six key. So don't be surprised if you see me trying to draw cards with that method and then having to manually draw them later on in the game. So I'm used to doing that, but again, because I'm not using hands. So I didn't talk about this. It's basically the same thing. You see the inherited effect is changing this fire in addition to its other elements. It says that it's inherited, which means that as we do level up, uh, we're going to keep that ability. So our leveled up champions are going to keep their elemental unlocked. So this character, this player is going to be able to play wind cards all game. This character is going to be able to play fire cards all game. It's just a matter of what we unlock later on. So with that in mind, let me look here. So she doesn't unlock anything at level one or two. At level three, she unlocks crux. So if I have any crux cards, uh, I might not want to, you know, put all my eggs in that basket because I won't be able to play them for a while. For example, these two cards, even though they have low cost, they're difficult to play with that crux element uh, as a requirement. So now because we're going second, we actually got that under effect, but we also get our normal draw step. So I'll also draw a card. And let's see what we want to do. So looking over my hand, I don't see anything that's a really great play. So I'm actually going to play this uh, action. Um, it says it's a mage action, but I think uh, I mean, this is a pre-constructed deck, so I'm assuming that that's fine for like a warrior spirit, whatever, to play a mage card. It's just that some cards will have the class bonus. You can see here the Sudden Steel has a class bonus if the subtype there matches your character. So if a warrior plays Sudden Steel, it's going to be better than if a mage plays Sudden Steel. But uh, Glim, uh, Scry the Skies, that's fine no matter who plays it. So we can play that. We need to put one card into our memory. So I'm just going to pick any of these crux cards. Uh, I don't know what they do. I just know I won't be able to play them for a while, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. And it says glimpse one plus level and then draw a card. And our level is zero, so we're going to glimpse one, and that means we get to look at the top card of our deck, choose to put it on the bottom, and then draw a card. So we'll look at this. It's a wind cutter, so we can play wind cards. We don't get the class bonus. So this would just be an attack for one, um, which I'm not excited about. So I'm going to put that on the bottom here. There we go, and draw this. Oops, and draw this card here. And it's another crux card. That's good. Exactly what we're looking for. Put that into the graveyard. And uh, yeah, so I guess we're just going to play set and seal. So I'm going to play set and seal. I'm going to hang on to. Kind of want the banner knight or the hurricane sweep. Obviously, the rest are crux. Uh, so we're going to be playing this card. I think we're allowed to do that. So. That's three of our four costs. We need to pay one more to pay for that four total. Okay, this isn't good. This isn't a good turn, I'm pretty sure, for this deck. But I don't know if there are mulligan rules, but I'm not going to worry about it. For this, we really want a weapon. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give up the Hurricane Sweep, or risk giving up the Hurricane Sweep. Again, we'll go over how that works in a moment. So the only card we have left in our hand for now is the Banner Knight. And Sudden Steel costs one less for each of our warriors. We don't have any. And class bonus doesn't apply because we're not currently a warrior yet. We're only a spirit. So we're just going to be attacking for three, as you can see in the bottom right corner of that card. And we're going to declare the attack against the Spirit of Fire, our opponent champion. And in order to attack, uh, attack actions require you to rest your champion. So we're attacking with Spirit of Wind. Who's using the sudden steel attack? Now, going back over to player one side, let's look at that library witch. They have a choice of whether to intercept. So the spirit of fire is being attacked, but because of library witch's intercept ability, they have the option to redirect the attack to this ally. And it has the ability that when it dies, you draw a card. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to have the library which take the three damage instead. It has one health, so it's going to be uh, defeated. And uh, that that player also gets to draw a card. So we'll send one card over there for that effect. That means the sudden steal is done. If they had the class bonus, 
it was intercepted against. So it would go to memory instead of graveyard, which would be great for the this player here. That would be really good. But it, they don't get the class bonus because they're just a spirit. So again, not ideal. And I think with that, we're going to end our turn and go back to player one. So now we get to do some more interesting things. So the first thing is the uh, awaken step. So if anything, or the wake up step, if anything were uh, rested, we would wake it up now, but we don't have anything rested. The next thing is the materialization phase. So we get to play a card from our materialization deck here. And I think pretty much just like the first thing we did was play Spirit of Fire, the next thing we want to do is bubble up our champion in level one. So there are more options for later in the game, but I'm pretty sure based on my very limited experience with the game, you want to at least at level one, probably level two, before you start going into some of these other uh, items. But uh, we'll see how that card flow uh, is really important later on. So let's go ahead and play Rai. And he's got a cost of one up in the left, upper left corner. And you see that cost is in blue. And that's different from the yellow costs on the cards in our hand from our main deck. Because we actually pay for that in a different way. Um, not by putting cards into memory, but by putting cards from memory into uh, banish. The cost is one, so we need to banish one of these two cards we put into memory. So that's what I was talking about, where we're risking these cards. One of these cards is coming back to our hand. The other one is going to be banished to pay for a level one champion. So we'll go ahead and put that on top here, so it makes it a little stack. Although we, we have inherited the fire, so we're... We, we, we can remember that we're still going to have access to fire. And let's just go ahead and roll one, two, three, four, five, six to see which one is banished. So one, two, three would be this one. And that's now gone for the rest of the game. And then we go into the next step where this card goes to our hand. And we draw for the turn. I did skip this trigger here. So an enter effect, put two enlightened counters on Rai. And just a reminder that the way your Enlightened Counters work is you can spend three to draw a card. So I'll grab that die and put that on him here as a two. And we're going to need to find a way to get at least one more before we can use it to draw a card. And I know that uh, he does have some cards in his deck that use those counters in other ways as well. So let's take a look at our hand and see what I want to do next. So I don't think I'm going to play Scry the Skies, but let's take a look at it for a second. It says uh, Glimpse 1 plus level draw a card. This is the same card we just played. Uh, for the Lorraine player. But we played it at level zero, and uh, Rai is now level one. So if we play it now, instead of glimpsing one, we would glimpse two before we draw a card. But if we played it Magus Disciple first, take a look at that. He says, class bonus, your champion gets plus one level. And our champion is a mage, so the class bonus would apply if she matches as she's also a mage. So if we played her first, we'd be level three, or yeah, we'd be level. We'd be level two, and so two plus one, we'd actually glimpse three and then draw a card with Scry of Skies. So already it's a lot better than the version that that Lorraine played, and we can see why uh, levels are really important in this game. So leveling up, manipulating levels, I think especially for the ride deck for me. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to play Scry of Skies, because what I'm going to do instead is play her, and we'll go ahead and flip these over, and I'll play another Library Witch and flip these over. We actually have a bunch of good cards with good options, but um, I think just playing some allies out is going to be good. So your library witch still has a zero attack. Your mage can't attack without an action or a weapon to attack with, uh, but the Magus Disciple can attack, and I'm going to go ahead and attack with her. So we're going to attack. We're going to go ahead and get the damage in um, while we can, and uh, the Spirit of Wind is going to take one damage. So one damage out of 10, although again, that 10 is going to change. You can see Rise health is already increased up to 15. I mean, we haven't taken any damage yet. We already gained five health. So now when we uh, materialize on our next turn, uh, we have four cards that we risk losing there. So let's go to player two. And the first thing we're going to do is wake up and materialize. So let's search this and I'm going to shortcut here and just grab Lorraine and take a look. So we're now a level one warrior, and enter effect is to materialize a weapon from a material deck with cost zero. So get that thing back open up. All right. So it looks like the only real option here is a commander's blade. 
uh, at least for this starter deck again and again sample art though no, this is not final art by any means uh but we're going to miss out on the the enter effect because even though we have the class bonus we don't have any allies to give plus one attack to uh, but having a weapon out is still going to be uh, better than not having one and i think we're forced to play anyway so we'll bring that out for free so this gives us one attack and i have one durability so you can only attack with it once we do need to pay for uh, for the materialization cost of our level one Lorraine. So let's go ahead and grab a die. We're going to do one, two, three, four, five, and we roll our sixes, and that will be the card that gets vanished. So we've lost our spirit's blessing. The rest of these flip back over and come back to our hand, and then we get to draw a card for the turn. So now I'm faced with a, a decision here. I, I don't have enough experience for the game to know. I feel like the esteemed knight is one of my two reasonable options here. So got a cost of three. We wouldn't really be able to do anything else uh, other than perhaps attack with our command of blade. But we could bring out a two, three ally, uh, two health, or two attack and three health. And we can then attack uh, either the witch or rye. Although either way, we'd end up killing the witch because they would intercept. Or we could attack the magus disciple and they can't intercept that. Uh, so that actually might make more sense uh, just to get that plus one level off the table. Although attacking, killing the witch means the witch can't intercept a future attack, which might, we might care more about. The other option is to play Hurricane Sweep. It costs five normally, but because of efficiency, it only costs four because of our level up. And has multi-target, which means it would attack all three of them. And this is an attack, so we would uh, rest Lorraine to play it. And if we wanted, we could also rest the Commander's Blade to increase the damage from one to everything, as you can see in the bottom right of this card, and change it to two for it, to everything, if I'm understanding correctly, due to the multi-target and attack bonus combination. But one is enough to take out the Disciple and the Witch. Uh, so it's just a question of whether we want to give up our Commander's Blade, because adding the one damage would reduce the durability here. And uh, just to deal one extra damage to Rye, which I probably would not. I'd probably keep the weapon around for later. So, but do I want to take out both of these or get a permanent guy out um, who, who looks pretty hard to, to kill, honestly? Um, and now I, now that I say that out loud, I'm thinking more that I do want to play the Esteem Knight. I mean, might even be able to Hurricane Sweep uh, more devastatingly later on. So let's put these three into memory. I don't know if I should be saving those for the late game, but I'm not. And um, so we've got that down. And so we paid those three memory costs. And now we can attack for two with him, and we can attack for one with her or save it. So I think let's go ahead and have the Assumed Knight attack the Magus Disciple. Now, the Library Witch cannot intercept because intercept only uh, blocks for champions. Now, the Rye player would have the option to retaliate with Magnus Disciple by resting her, and it would deal one damage back to the Esteemed Knight, but because Magnus Disciple is already rested, she does not have that option. So you're just going to be taken out. No damage is dealt back to the Esteemed Knight, although dealing one damage back wouldn't do anything anyway, because damage clears the end of the turn from allies, not from champions, of course. Uh, because of the Magnus Disciple's ability, the Rive player will draw one card. And that will now be the only card in your hand. And insert. interestingly, it was another Magnus Disciple. And now, do we want to use our weapon to take out the Witch? Normally, I might say yes, but honestly, now I'm thinking we might want to save it for a Hurricane Sweep. If Rive plays another Yinder or two, and we don't have anything else better to do, we might want a Hurricane Sweep, so we don't want to take out all the opponent's units, we give up our potential value there. So um, I think I'm going to save my weapon and uh, not not attack. So that will end our turn. And back to Rye, we will uh, wake up. We will look, let's have a look in our materialization deck. So I think I am going to go ahead and level up Rise. So the most, the steepest cost card here, other than of course the level three form. And I doubt, I doubt we'll be going to level three next turn uh, because uh, materializing with steep costs like this really is expensive. So I need to banish two of my memory. So let's do one, two, three, four, and then we roll five or six. So we lose this card. Uh, it's a shame, we like the library witches. 
And uh, then card number one. And we've lost the arcane sight, which is actually pretty nice. Smooth card there. So now we're down to three cards in hand, and then we get to draw a fourth. Um, but yeah, that is a pretty small hand. Like, we can't even afford to play up here in the mana, and we have two of those. So not great, but we are now at level two. And I think it's important to ride to, to level up. I think his, he can take some damage. We haven't taken any yet. So it's important for him to build up. So let's stick with this plan for now. And he's gained a new ability. So he can, now whenever we play our first mage action card, we get another enlightened counter. So we sell these two and we can get another, we have another way of getting more now. Again, we can't play here into mana, but we could play Scribe Skies. And you know what? I think we will. So let's pay, put this in the memory and play Spry the Skies. It is a mage action. So we get our third counter here. And we get to glimpse one plus level. Our level is now two. Unfortunately, we lost the Magus Disciple, which would have made it count for three. But because of one plus level, we do get to glimpse for three. So let's look at three cards. We'll put them over here, I suppose. We have Focused Flames. This card costs three less. If we uh, have a class bonus and focus, meaning we haven't materialized anything this turn. And it just deals 40 minutes to an ally. Dungeon Guide. So it lets us banish two cards from our memory at random. So level up. That seems like a great deal, honestly. And Creative Shock lets us draw two and discard a card. And if a uh, class bonus is made, which we have, if a fire card is discarded by it, we can choose the unit and deal two damage to it. But you know what? I'm going to the level up. So I'm going to put, I don't know if we need any of these really. It's pretty good. But I'm going to put both these on the bottom. Shove my deck out of the way to do so. And I put this back on top and then have that be the card that I draw. So we've done that. And then I'm going to remove three enlightened counters since, um, well, here, uh, remove three enlightened counters to draw a card. So that's just a reminder that we can do this and this. And now I can do this, this, and this to play this. Going crazy here. Banish two cards from my memory at random. So let's do again the same thing here. Uh, card number three. And then we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six. one, two, three, four, and five, six. Get rid of that. So we're losing cards, but we get to level up. So we get to find a compatible champion card from our material deck and ignore materialization costs. So we're level three. And that seems good. So we're down, we're very short on cards now, but we've activated our cane. We're level three, so all our level effects are going to be stronger. And we have 25 health. So I guess that's our cap. So our opponent needs to do 25 damage. And we're going to start doing strong stuff, I think. Go ahead and have Dungeon Guide attack uh, Lorraine. So we'll do one more damage to her. And that'll be the end of her turn. So the uh, the esteemed knight here gets to wake up. And the Lorraine player gets to materialize. So I don't know if this is the best strategy, but I'm going to play this Warrior's Longsword from my materialization deck. And it has a materialization cost of one, so we're going to need to roll our standard distribution here. And we're going to lose that uh, Spirit Blade Infusion card that I haven't even read yet. Uh, I don't know that there are any rules against having more than one weapon out, so I'm going to have those both available. And put these cards back in my hand and draw a card. And my plan here is I'm going to go ahead and Hurricane Sweep. So all four of these are going into our materialization. Uh, it says it costs, or our memory rather, it says it costs five, but it's uh, efficient. So it's one less because we're level one. And uh, we have multi-target, so it's going to attack for one against everything. But we're going to uh, rest this Warrior's Longsword for one more damage. And with the class bonus says it gets plus one more damage. So we're actually attacking for three against everything, if I understand things correctly. So that's three against the Dungeon Guide, which will take it out. Three against the Library Witch, which will take it out, and they get to draw a card. And three against Rai, 
strong here. So that's our first three ads that we're going to him. And uh, we do need to put one durability uh, or damage or whatever. I don't know if it's supposed to start with three and then, or start with two and then lose them, or we're just going to count up. So we got one damage there or durability loss on the Warrior's Longsword. And we do have to also rest her in order to do that. And then the Esteemed Knight can just freely attack for two more damage. And we've now put five damage uh, toward the 25 health from Rai, and then we can pass the turn. So, we are level three, but we've now taken five damage. We went from zero to five, that's 25% uh, of our health. And what do we want to materialize? I'm going to go for the Bauble of Empowerment. I'm not thrilled about using it this way, uh, but I think I've taken a look around my hand, and this is what I want to do. So these are going to come back. This is going to add to our hand. And we can now, it only costs zero, so free to bring out. That's great. And uh, it does take our materialization for the turn, but it only costs zero. And if we can banish it to get two levels until end of turn. Now, we've had the experience of mana sitting around for a while, but we now have Purge in Flames, which is efficient, costs level less to activate our blood level three, so the seven brings down to four, which we still can't afford, and uh, deals three damage to all units except for our champion because of the class bonus. So we can take out this Esteemed Knight and put three damage on full ring. So I think that's what we want to do, but again, we can't afford the four cost, but we can banish the bobble, and now we um, basically bring that cost from four down to two and we can put these here in Tamana back into our memory and play purge in flames. It's a fire card, but we can play fire because we have that spirit of fire as our beginning form of the champion. And in fact we have this inherited ability still. Uh, whenever we play our first mage action we get an enlightened counter. So let's get our enlightened counter and we're gonna deal three damage to uh to this knight and to Lorraine. So we bring it up to a tie game, although she does have um, a bit more health at her maximum level if she manages to get there. So we've done that. We got an enlightened counter, which is nice. And uh, that's not pretty much all we can do. So I guess we pass the turn back. So Lorraine will awaken and uh, check out what her options are. I'm I'm not opposed to leveling up to Blade Master here, level two, but the enter effect would potentially let us draw a card if we took out an ally, and there are currently no allies on Rai's side. I really want that draw a card. So I'm thinking about not leveling uh, yet just because of that. So I think I'm going to go for the Life Essence Amulet instead. Whenever an ally control dies while this is not our turn, we can banish this to draw a card. So this might just let us get uh, another card draw. Uh, for basically for free. So we'll recollect these, put our memory back into our hand, and draw a card. Probably not going to be doing, well, no, we're going to do a little bit here. We're going to play the Banner Knight, putting these four cards into memory. And now it says all are, oh, we're not level two, so we don't get that bonus, unfortunately. Um, I got ahead of myself here, but I think, ooh, you know what? I might rather play the Weapon Smith. Okay, so I'm going to play the Weaponsmith again because we're not actually level two yet. Uh, so we're going to play him. He costs two. So we'll just put maybe these crop cards. I don't want to be split the difference. Um, although, no, we probably are going to go to level two. So whatever we put into memory, our cards were losing. So yeah, let's hold on to one Banner Knight and maybe actually should we these crux cards for later. I think I'm going to keep up the way it is here, and then we're going to use the Weaponsmith to attack for one damage. And uh, we're going to attack with the Commander's Blade here. So uh, we're going to lose the durability from the Commander's Blade, so it's going to go away, and we're going to do one more damage. And go back to Ryan. So Rai will awaken and materialize. We'll also materialize a life essence amulet uh, with the intention here of probably playing an ally's turn. Though, you know what? We might just be playing. Oh, we can't even afford tier into mana, so 
looks like Magus Disciple is going to be the play here. Uh, we can Arcane Sight. We'll get plus one level and just draw a card. I don't know if that does anything other than cycle through our deck uh, for no particular reason. We might want to use that later on. But you know what? Maybe we'll see the options. Let's play that. Uh, that also means we get another counter. So that's good. Uh, if for no other reason. So we get plus one level. Probably doesn't matter. And we draw a card. Fireball would cost two and deal one plus four damage for a total of five to a unit. So we can just fireball something. A uh, unit would include a champion. So we could take out the weapon smith uh, or just hit five damage on the low range. I think I'd rather just play the Disciple. And let's put both of these into the memory. Hopefully we'll get at least one back. And then the Disciple will attack uh, Lorraine. The damage is creeping up. Back to Lorraine's turn. We will wake up. And it's time to go to level two. We've been putting it off for a while. So unfortunately, that means we lose both of these. And then draw. And we have an enter effect. Until end of turn, whenever it attacks, gain plus the damage, and whenever it attacks, destroys an ally, draw a card. So we do need to use a weapon for that. But actually, during our uh, recollection phase, we got to add another durability here. So I was counting up. I should be kind of just keep it consistent. I think they do start with durability and lose it, but I've been doing it the other way, so I'm going to stick with that. So we remove that uh, durability damage there, and that means we can keep using this long for for longer. So uh, let's go ahead and just see what we draw. So we, we're going to be attacking for two four damage, uh, which is complete overkill on the disciple. But I want to see what we draw. So let's do that. We put one of these. Um, Durability damage is on and take out Lorraine, or not Lorraine, Magus Disciple, which means they get to draw a card. And unfortunately, because the life of the amulet, um, the Rye player will go ahead and banish that to draw another card. So all we can really do is put one more damage onto Rye with the weapon smith. Seeing my audio, I was previously just running a decorative lapel mic, uh, so this should sound a little bit better here. We've drawn Dream Fairy, which is a very strong card. So. We wouldn't have really been able to do anything, but we now have a couple options. We can play the esteemed knight as a 2-3 and put all three cards into memory, or we can play Dream Fairy, which is very, very strong. I think this card is being adjusted, but for now it is what it is, so let's uh, take advantage of that. Um, put two cards into our memory here. Let's do those two and keep the banner knight around. Are there one, two... I wonder how many cards we'll be able to hold on to. And also, if we do want to level up to three, we actually might. We need to put all. We need to put three cards into memory, which means, means we need to play a three cost card. We might be able to draw with the life essence amulet if one of our allies is uh, dies, but. Uh, man, we do. We would still need three cards in memory if we want to level up to three, which we don't have to. Something to think about. And now is the time to think about it. But we'd be going into level three with no cards in our hands, so let's let's not do that. Um, let's wait a little bit and let's put let's keep the esteemed knight around. No, I'll keep the banner knight. Okay, so we're gonna play the dream fairy. Uh, a random card from our opponent's memory is gonna be banished. So we'll uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. That starting on this side here. So that would be this one. And they do lose their peer into mana there. So that's nice for us. And uh, when it dies, though, they get the top card of their deck as memory. So the memory slot will be refilled. And this has stealth, so it can't be targeted by attacks. Um, well, we do want it to die, so that's interesting. And uh, we can go ahead and attack for one as well. So one damage to uh, Rai there. And then we'll go back to his turn. And let's check our materialization deck. So I'm going to grab the mana limiter and I think we're just going to use it this turn. So we can't uh, remove enlightened counters to pay for costs here, but um, we can banish it to draw a card if we have six or more enlightened counters. And I'm planning to be able to meet that criteria here. So let's look at what's going on. Uh, so it's just a 3-1, not 
fab three one could use that to do some damage but uh yeah I think I really just want to play the pure into mana here and we're gonna be able to uh, add one due to rise level two ability and then we get two plus our level uh, counter so we're level three so we get five more counters bringing us up to eight and uh, since we now have six or more we can draw a card we got another blitz mage that we won't be able to use and we have eight enlightenment so we could remove we could start removing them paying three at a time to draw a card uh, we could draw two cards here although we still wouldn't be able to play the blitz mage so we kind of be relying on the top of our deck and i might rather just keep these counters and uh, not really do anything else this turn but we can start spending them to do to double our actions so I think that is more interesting to me. So let's just suck it up and pass the turn. So we'll go over to Lorraine, who has a lot of cards to stand up. Oops, I shuffled our little champion deck there. Uh, let's take a look at our materialization deck. And I would really love to go to level three, but we can't, and we can't really afford the cards. So we want to save up cards here. So I'm going to bring out our last uh, level zero card here the uh the avengers ring so if two or more of our allies have died in a particular turn we can banish this to draw a card so we'll see if that happens but we'll just get out in the field uh, just in case and go ahead and get that and draw actually we did skip this so we need to put durability onto this uh warrior's longsword so we get to keep this around for a while which is nice so what do we want to do? I mean, all we really need to do is just get some attacks in. I'd love to put three cards into memory, though. So I might be playing the Esteemed Knight just so I can put these three cards into memory. Although that does put us in that same position where we then have no, uh, no cards, none at all. But it might just be time, and then we can rely on maybe the Avenger's Ring or Life Essence Ammo to give us some cards back. But otherwise, we're playing off the top of our deck. A lot of the Crux cards do cost uh, zero or one, it seems like. Uh, but we still need two cards to be able to play a one-cost card. So, um, But I think getting to level three is worth it. Let me take a look here. What does she do? So we get plus one attack for each regalia weapon in Banishment, which is currently one because I did let that one card hit Banishment, the uh, Commander's Blade. But we don't have any more currently. The only one is this Warrior's Longsword, which we've been keeping around due to our Weaponsmith. So... Having one innate attack is nice, though, uh, even if it's only one. But if this Weaponsmith dies, it won't be the end of the world, because we can bring out another weapon and uh, put this into Banishment to buff up our level 3 stats. But for now, I think I do want to go to level 3, so I am going to go ahead and play the Esteemed Knight, and I'm going to be giving up these cards, basically, and uh, hopefully that is worthwhile. I'm not sure, but I, I don't want to put off level 3 any longer, even though I'm going down to basically uh, top deck mode here. But uh, we're going to do 1, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 damage. So that is a lot. So Rice said he could suck it up. Well, there you go. He's now up to 15 damage out of, uh, out of his 25. So only 10 more damage, and he's done. So let's go back to Ryan and see what he can do. Uh, he did a big setup turn there. And let's see if there's anything else to pull out. Yeah, one damage from the Endora Scepter uh, of Ignition is not going to do much. So let's go for the Tome of Knowledge here. And we do need to pay one um, materialization cost here, one memory. So we'll do five and six reroll here. Get this is gone, so Fireball is out. We won't be able to do a fireball or a double fireball, but uh, I think that's okay. And draw. And take a look at our hand. So I think we do want to play Anger of the Sky. So it deals three damage to all allies, but because we have the Mage class bonus, we're going to deal four instead. And that's going to take out the Weaponsmith, the Dream Fairy, and the Esteemed Knight. So let's do that. But uh, when we do that, we're going to get another Enlightenment counter, which is going to put us up to nine which means we could draw three cards. We can also draw one card and then save six enlightenment, potentially five of it to double a card, 
We don't need to double the anger of the skies because it doesn't hit champion, so we're not going to be hurting Larian anyway, and we are going to be taking out all three allies anyway. So uh, what I might think I want to do then is draw the card first, just so I have the most information possible before playing anger of the skies, and I can see what uh, my other options are. So let's do that, bring us down to five and draw. So this fireball actually puts us in a good situation for next turn. We might be able to make a big enough fireball or a doubled fireball to just to finish off Lorraine. Um, we'll see if she goes to level 328. Might be a little bit out of range, but uh, we are actually closing in. So the, the biggest threat is to just get rid of the um, the the allies over there. So I am going to be playing the Anger of the Skies. For a second, I thought I had lethal because I can do 10 damage with this fireball this turn, but uh, I had shuffled the the Lorraine stack on accident, and I this was on top, and I was looking at the number 16 there. So I thought I had lethal with 10 damage, but she's actually got 22 health, so I do not have lethal here. I'd have to do uh, more damage than or 16 damage, which I cannot do. I can do 10, but can't do 16. So we're going to play Anger of the Skies. I'm going to make sure I keep this Fireball. I don't want to lose that. Uh, the Power Overwhelming is nice, but I think I'm okay to risk it here, depending on what I uh, materialize anyway. So we're going to do four damage to all allies instead. Unfortunately, that will trigger the Avengers ring. But um, yeah, so the weapon smith is going to be off the table. They get they won't be able to recharge their weapon anymore. The esteemed knight is off the table. The dream fairy is off the table, and we get a card into our memory. And um, yeah, so that is the Anger of the Skies, which is pretty good. And that's going to be all we do on our turn, um, but we're setting up, and we're getting a bunch of cards. We've got a big memory here. We're going to draw another card. We're going to be able to play Fireball, potentially more stuff. Uh, we actually do get another counter because we played a Mage card, so this uh, Inherited Effect here, whenever you ca activate your first Mage action card of the turn, another Enlightenment, we go to 6, and that's going to potentially make our... Um, or doubling stronger, or if we manage to keep the, uh, oops, this one here, the power overwhelming will let us spend enlightenment to, to make bigger fireballs. So go ahead and pass back to Lorraine, and she will wake up, wake up her sword. Uh, oh, we do do the Avenger's Ring and the Life Essence of the Amulet. So now I controls dies while it's not your turn. Banish this to draw a card. And uh, end of the turn, if two or more allies died, uh, banished it to draw a card. So Lorraine is building up a couple cards here, and we are going to go to level 3. Let's just stick with the plan. Uh, so we'll do that. Let's find her. Uh, so we had to pay the 3 for that. Oh, I should have banished those, but uh, there you go. So now we have Crux access, and uh, her attacks do plus 1 damage because we have 1 Regalia weapon in Banishment. Now if I attack with her and with this sword, I'm not totally sure, but I'm going to assume the weapon lasts through the fight and so it won't be in the graveyard. It doesn't, not going to count if doubled. So uh, she would be able to attack for one, two, three damage. And then this will, will go away finally because of the two durability and the, the weapon smith now gone. But that will then buff her attack for future because of her, her, her natural ability. And then we can bring out another weapon last, next turn. We'll materialize it. So we can't play the Crusader of Asa because we can't pay the three. We've got one card here, two, three. So we need at least four cards to do that. Uh, but we could play Scry the Skies. And we may as well. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll play that. Put this face down. And we're going to Glimpse 1 plus 3. So four cards. we got Weaponsmith. Favorable wins cost one less to activate for each resting ally you control. Your allies get plus one attack and health until end of turn. Banner Knight and a Crusader of Asa. Unfortunately, these are a bit expensive. The favorable wins, we just lost our allies here. Uh, I think we're going to keep the Weaponsmith on top, so then we're going to draw that card. And, and we'll put the rest, all of them on the bottom, really. I, I don't, I don't want to draw any of these. Um, they're either expensive or, or not relevant to our current situation. Uh, so that was the Scry the Skies card is done. We've got these two cards in our hand. We can't play either of them. So what we can do is attack for one, two, three. And that will do three damage. So we're up to 18. Only seven more to go. And that 
is done, and that means her attack is now two, naturally. And we can bring in another weapon to enhance that later. We'll pass back to Ryan, see if he can close it out. So he can materialize a card here. I'm not sure if this here card is supposed to be visible because it's in our memory, but we didn't put it there. So I'm going to pretend I didn't see that, but I do want to look at these and consider whether I want the Arcanist's Prism, which would basically let us reset uh, all these cards. I think the Power Overwhelming is pretty good. Uh, I'm not sure how the trigger works. Whenever you activate your first mage action of each turn, put an Enlightenment counter. So I don't know if I play this so I get it right away. Um, and then when it resolves, I can remove the counter I just gained. That's how it would work in Magic. Uh, I do think a lot of the stack stuff is similar to how Magic works. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's how it works, that I could spend the Enlightenment counter I gained for this effect. Uh, I might play it that way just because that's how it would work in Magic. And I don't want to go look up the rules right now. In that case, it, it is potentially pretty good here because we would play it, trigger this ability here, get our seventh counter, and then spend all seven to be level 11. Or maybe we would spend two to be level six, and then this would make it seven damage, which we could then double to 14. 14 plus six is 20. We need to hit 28. So that might still not be good enough. Um, that doesn't mean we're not playing Fireball this turn, but it probably means we're not winning this turn. But I don't know if any of these other cards are what we want to be doing either. So yeah, you know what? I'm going to try it. I'm going to do the Arcanist Prism. Let's just see. Let's see if we do a reshuffle what we get. Uh, the only card I don't really want to lose is the Power Overwhelming. And I wouldn't even be too heartbroken about that. So let's go ahead and roll. Right, six is a reroll. Four, and that is the one I wanted to keep. But uh, so now what we do here as we at the beginning of a recollection, instead of putting those cards into our hand, we're gonna put them on the bottom of our deck in any order and then draw that many cards. So let's do this. We're gonna draw four. And then draw for turn. And let's review what we got. All right, so I'm going to do a creative shock here. We're going to play that, which gives us another counter um, immediately, I'm assuming. And we're going to put these three cards here in memory to pay for the three costs. We're going to draw two cards and then discard a card. All right, so I'm actually going to discard the fireball, I think, because... Uh, maybe I'll save it just in case, but I, I just drew this Arcane Blast, which is going to be enough to, to take out Lorraine if we double it, but we can't afford it this turn. So it has efficiency, costs level S to activate. Our level is 4 because of the Tome, so cast 7. And if we had our Overwhelming, uh, we might be able to use that. Uh, probably not, still not this turn, but next turn. But uh, we're going to go ahead and discard the Creative Shock, I guess, and that will trigger the, if the Fire card was discarded, deal two damage to a unit. So we'll do two more damage. Um, might not be relevant if we get, get in for 22 here. Um, and we have this Spell Shield Arcane as a backup plan if Lorraine does pull out a bunch of damage. Uh, so we're not going to play anything else here. And we'll pass back. So Lorraine can uh, awaken here and check out what she's got in the materialization deck. And let's grab the Seer's Sword. So this is one of her weapons that uh, remaining, that one of the options here. So, But it's got three durability, so we can use it for several turns before having to worry about bringing out anything else. Because at this point, every card is a significant cost. She doesn't really have that many, so we're losing. I uh, have to pay that. Um, and when we do use it to attack, we get to glimpse one which will be nice because we'll get a little bit of card selection from what we are drawing here. So here's a two-cost card, which we could play, but it wouldn't do anything. We have a two-cost card that we can play. Um, actually, I forgot about that. We can keep this Seer Sword around longer. I wonder if that means, with the Weaponsmith, I wonder if I want this Prismatic Edge. But you know what? We, we don't have a memory, really, so we're not... We might hit Fire and be able to deal three damage. 
it might be worth going for the win, but we can't trigger the other two elements. So what's what do we have him at? He's at 18, that would put him at 21. And we can attack for three more to be 24, but he's at 25. Uh, but we could play the Weaponsmith, and that would be the one more damage we need. So maybe it does make sense to play that. If we hit a fire card, that could just be the end of the game. But if not, we're kind of wasting that trigger, because we know we're not going to hit wind or water. You know what? I am going to risk it. Rather than trying to play a longer game against Rai, let's, let's grab, the, uh, grab the Prismatic Blade instead, and tr hopefully we hit a fire card. So reveals all cards from their memory. If a fire card was revealed, choose a unit and deal three damage to it. So reveal, 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 and there's actually no... Oh, there is a fire. So we get to deal three damage to Rai, and he'll go ahead and take it, putting it to 21 damage. We will then attack with Lorraine Crux Knight with the Prismatic Edge. Oh, we would break it, though. The Weaponsmith doesn't matter. So it will break right away. It only has one durability. Um, but it's still worth it. We're still going for it here. So we're attacking for three. And this time, I think Rai does have to pull out the Spell Shield Arcane. So this is a fast. It's the first fast uh, action I think we've performed this game. But uh, it costs two less to activate because of the uh, class bonus. And the next time damage will be able to champion this turn. Prevent that damage. Put an amount of light encounters on your champion equal to the amount of damage prevented. So we're going uh, to pay one here and uh, prevent the damage, and we're going to get three more Enlightenment Encounters, which is going to break Lorraine's heart here, so she's going to lose Prismatic Edge, although that does bring up her attack. She's now base three attack. She still needs a weapon to actually perform it, but uh, yeah, base three, pretty good. And we're going to bring out the Weaponsmith, just because it's something, so we'll bring that out and attack for one, which Rai cannot stop, so she's running out of resources, but he's running out of health, so... Let's see if he can close it out now with that Arcane Blast. I don't even know if we want to pull anything out of here because they all cost one. And we want to preserve... Oh, this doesn't cost one. If it's the third time they've attacked with a unit this turn, you can draw a card. So, sure, we'll get that for free. Uh, but, yeah, we want to preserve as many cards as we can. So I'm not going to materialize anything with a cost. So we get these back to hand. And we get to draw a card. And let's see how our numbers add up. So that was my mistake. I forgot to trigger the Arcanist's Prism. We, Instead of recollecting our cards, we should have put them on the bottom of our memory and then drawn. So the Arcane Blast is a card we drew for turn, and these other four are actually going away here. And we're going to draw different four cards. Really need a Power Overwhelming or some leveling um, buffing effect here. I don't know if we can pull it off. Uh, we can't quite play an 11 cost card. 11 minus 4 is still 7. We only have 5. I mean, I can draw more cards, which I guess we really have to do. So let's let's go ahead and see what that is. Sure, appearance man is great. Um, 2 plus level, so we can gain... Four more Enlightenment counters, but we have to basically pay five cards this turn in order to do that. And we gain six Enlightenment counters. But the Enlightenment counters don't do this. It would be great if I could just do this all the time. So again, I'm going to mess with the stack a little bit, and I'm going to assume things work the way Magic does, and I think we might actually be able to finish this off. So Pyrrhon of Mana would cost us five cards this turn and give us... Um, six um, enlightenment which is us draw two cards so I don't think that's going to help us close out the game if we pass the turn I think we're dead we're, we only have three health left she can just attack for three all she has to do is play a weapon um, not to mention the weapon smith uh, so unless we had another arcane barrier or an interceptor which we currently don't have we could try to draw one with careful study or scry of the skies uh, but it's a bit risky so uh, I think what we can do here is assume the stack works the way I want it to. Again, if this were, if I were playing against a friend, that we'd, we'd look it up in the rules. But for the sake of uh, just finishing out this video, you can tell it's going to end one way or the other here. Uh, so let's go from 7 uh, Enlightenment down to 4, spending 3 of it to draw a card. 
We got focused flames, which can hit an ally, but we don't really care about that. And so what we're going to do now is play Arcane Blast. So it costs 11, but it's efficient, so it's 4 less, minus 3, minus 1. So it costs 7. We have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 cards. So we'll put those into memory. And uh, that will trigger our Gain 1 Enlightenment counter ability. So while this is still on the stack or the chain or whatever they call it, we're going to go up to 5. And then while this is still in the stack, we're going to respond and use tap, remove five enlightenment counters from Rai to copy it and basically double this 11 into 22. We're going to spend all of our enlightenment exactly and deal 22 damage, bringing learning up to 30. So that was the play we were going for. Uh, when I thought Lorraine was at 16 health. I thought I could uh, get away with a double fireball, but she was actually at 22 health, and now she's at 28 health. So we really had to go for that double arcane blast um, to close out the game. If we weren't able to pull that off, if maybe if the rules didn't work in our favor, then we can pretty clearly see that Rai was was done for. I mean, we could again glimpse into like five cards. Uh, we do have some interceptors if we really just want to stall out the game. For, for longer and keep building up enlightenment. Maybe that would have worked out. But I think this video has gone on long enough. You've heard me talking long enough and you know whether this game looks good. I, I'm excited to see really the uh, the summoner is more interesting to me. I love bringing out lots of pets. I don't know if they'd be all allies or, or if you got like an animal companion or something. I haven't previewed too much of the summoner. And then there's a fourth class that got unlocked through stretch goals. So I'm excited to see what variety. And plus I'm playing a mage, but Remember, I started with the uh, Fire Spirit here on Rai and the Wind Spirit on the Rain. So you just swap out which spirit you start with. And even though you're playing with the same character, the same class, you might have different uh, and a different element from the beginning of the game. So you could play a Fire, uh, war, uh, fire Warrior deck with Lorraine or a, a Wind or Water Mage, for example, and have a different breed of deck rather than having Impassioned Tutors and Fireballs and Blitz Mages, you might have Water cards. So even though you probably still are going to be playing with this Arcane stuff, for your level three, so very cool. Um, I'm pretty happy keeping my pledge. I'm going to be looking at the add-on for a second box. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a big spender usually, but we'll see. So anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe so we get more subscribers, and bye.